Don in London, hello. It's July 5th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substances or behaviour, or and behaviour in my case. My substance, alcohol, alcoholic in recovery, and my behaviour, which was around people, places and things. Being with the right people, in the right place, doing the right things. And these days, probably being with the right people, in the right places, with the right things just simply my needs met and my wants forgotten. So what's recovery from addiction? Well a one day process, a one day way to live, the one day in which we live and not trying to make it too complicated. I feel that's where I often overthought life thinking if I got it right then you would like me, love me, include me. I never realised it was okay to say no an emphatic no, as Gandhi said, is better than a half-hearted yes. So I never learned to say no. So a bit of a people pleaser, trying very hard to be whatever I thought you wanted me to be, and live life happily and successfully. Is that not what we want? Well, with a drink inside me, it took the edge off my feelings. The very first drink did that took the edge off my feelings and gave me a distorted view of life. It may have leapt to my, my help or defence at the time to let me experience and feel something beyond fear, putting on a brave face and stuff like that. So what helps me these days to keep sober? Well, same applies before and after. Family, friends, community, medical people, professionals, all helped me understand in the end that I was an addict, addicted to alcohol and that life pretty much couldn't get any worse and it was only when I realised that life couldn't get any worse that I really asked for help and I would go to any lengths to try and find a way to keep sober one day at a time and then introduced to the fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous a fellowship which helps me keep sober one day at a time. I never speak for AA, can't, won't. It's full of unique authentic people in, the, in terms of people being on their life journey. No one's in the same place at the same time, as it were, although we can be in the same place and same time when we go to meetings and share experience, strength and hope. And it's really important, the anonymity bit, simply it provides a sanctuary to find out what the truth is of who we are and where we're headed. Just one day. So meetings of AA help me find out who I am or who I am becoming and I know a little bit more about me by the end of the day. So it's really important, the anonymity. At the same time, I share the experience, strength and hope because it's my outlook. And if I didn't share what AA did for me, then I would be omitting a great part of the way I keep sober. So this is one voice in recovery and it's the many voices in the a, a fellowship and other fellowships and people who keep sober just as they do, which makes the difference. We get our wisdom from every source available. So AA, what is it? I share about it. Uh, unashamedly because it keeps me sober and by doing these uh, videos it helps me highlight what works in the program of being sober and that's the 12 steps and 12 traditions to a large extent so this is what AA says about itself and I think I feel it's got the message right Alcoholics Anonymous this is just one person's view don't forget Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And that's it. A desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any set denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So that last sentence, our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. 
So if you know a little bit more about how it works for me, and you then find out how it works for other people, that's how it works. Just wisdom for today. And no one is there to impose a discipline on you when you go to the fellowship. It's a place where we learn freedom of choice in how we behave and what our attitudes and behaviour can be on a daily basis. And I have my words from uh, previous years and something of the Daily Reflections, which is an AA literature book all about recovery, covering 365 days. There are 12 steps, so there are one to, there is one step a month in this book. So we're in July, it's all about step seven, which is how we get how we have our shortcomings removed on a daily basis and step six was all about defects of character so steps and six and seven are quite important to me it made a difference which I didn't really understand until I was in the fellowship for a little while because I never realized exactly what defects of character might be and I never really understood what my shortcomings might be in how I behaved and my attitudes but the daily reflections for today was all about a new direction, July 5th. Our human resources are marshalled by the will. As marshalled by the will, were not sufficient. They failed utterly, as mine did. I couldn't stop drinking, no matter what I did. Every day is a day when we must carry the vision of God's will into all our activities. And I'll talk about God's will in a moment, because it's not my understanding which is important. It's well it's important to me but what's important about anything to do with God is how you understand it in your life or not as the case may be I hear talk of the weak willed alcoholic but I am one of the strongest willed people on earth I now know that my incredible strength of will is not enough to save my life my problem is not one of weakness but rather of direction when I, without falsely diminishing myself, accept my honest limitation and turn to God's guidance, my worst faults become my greatest assets. My strong will, rightly directed, keeps me working until the promises of the program become my daily reality. And uh, the, the ultimate promise is a sober day. Which may seem, for many who are not addicted, as just normal life. But for the per person who has fallen into addiction, willpower will fail. And we're going in the wrong direction, no matter what we do. My thoughts about all of this. Uh, coming back to the present day, a meeting last night, all about step 11, which is prayer and meditation, to improve our conscious contact with God as we understand Him. As I hear often, God, as I hear often, God is now. For me, God is now, or what is going on. The, Im the most important connection I have is to reality right now. God is truth, love and wisdom. So if I can access truth, love and wisdom daily, life can be much improved. Knowing I cannot define God, because I can't define God, or have God-like abilities, helps me stop my desire to control. It does, actually. Indeed, it makes me feel human-sized with a conscience and able to make choices with freedom today and uh, you know when I go to a step 11 meeting where it is about prayer and meditation I was able to share that I don't have a, an understanding of or be able to define God but if the experience of now is God truth love and wisdom the closer to truth love and wisdom I am the better my decision decisions and freedoms are so on a daily basis when I say I'm powerless over alcohol and if I took a drink life would be unmanageable that's a truth because being an addict it wouldn't stop at one drink it would just start a whole horrible process going again of trying to be in control of it so if I'm powerless over it I don't drink I've got my freedom back to make better choices to access truth, love and wisdom on a daily basis and for me that's conscious contact with a higher power the wisdom, the truth and the love of other people. So for step six and seven, assets and liabilities. In recovery our liabilities are extremes of outlook and behaviour, often called de defects. So extremes of behaviour, defects. Extreme fear, 
pretending an ego. So extremes of fear, where everything is dredged up from the past and makes me feel, feel fearful about today, is not a reality. Putting on a brave face when I'm not so sure about things, when I forget to ask for help, is not going to help me. And my ego, which is about covering up shame and guilt about being an alcoholic, isn't going to help me too much either. And blind faith, courage to extremes without foundation, don't really help me with my confidence. So extremes of fear, putting on a brave face, ego, and equally blind faith without foundation, courage without foundation, and confidence without any re reason for it can be very difficult. So our assets in fellowship, we build foundations to live to good principles and then we develop courage, faith and confidence today. So if I realise it's okay not to know and ask for help to access the truth, love and wisdom of the universe as it exists today, I've got a better chance of uh, a day working out sober and some prospects that my needs will be met and my wants forgotten and in other years a new direction open honest and willing in unity service and recovery towards a happy life every secret keeps us prisoner to fear putting on a brave face and ego and being found out better to find serenity in truth being human able to make mistakes admit and accept own up lo love and be loved today and I feel that's good because I don't have to hide anymore I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm pretending to be okay. I much prefer being just me. And that doesn't mean it's easy. <coughs> and what I know more than anything is that uh, I can step over the boundaries of other people's, people's place of safety and make them feel awkward if I'm not careful. But if I try and be human sized, which is the same size as everybody else, same progress being made today and asking for help when I don't know then I've got a better idea of what the truth might be and I was just looking at this again we were re entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character and that's step six so entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character and maybe that's my good conscience emerging again where I'm not at extremes of behavior I'm somewhere in the middle a balance of fear, a balance of confidence around what is going on. It means I don't go dance in the traffic, but I observe what the traffic is doing around me, and that also applies to people. I don't jump in to everything that people are suggesting. I actually ask myself, is this the best way forward for me? So if everybody's going to a club or a pub or a bar to start getting drunk, I don't follow. I might smile and think, I did that in the past and sometimes it was good and had outcomes which I thoroughly enjoyed but if I were to do it again today what would be my consequences so I look to the consequences of what might happen and the the brilliant news for me in all of this is if I don't need a drink to be happy or merry and I don't need a drink to experience the range of feelings that I have which are God given or as nature intended, if I don't have to push them out of me or find a way of suppressing them with alcohol or indeed any other substance, then life will run to truth rather than to, I suppose, a false perception of life. And humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. As I said, my shortcomings are not having the right balance of real feelings going on so I can experience reality. So step six and seven, some people call it a psychic change. Well it's certainly a change in attitude and behavior to say if my feelings fit the experience I'm having, if my feelings fit what's going on then life is probably on track and I am experiencing truth and finding the wisdom of what next. I know I labour the point sometimes on this, but it took me a long time to understand what the 12 steps might be, because I came, in, came into fellowship with a, a very confused outlook. And uh, just touching on the tradition for this month, 
Every AA group ought to be self, fully self-supporting, declining outside contributions. And this, this also applies across the fellowship as a whole. We only have enough money and a prudent reserve, which is one or two months. It means that uh, issues of money never become significant, nor elements of power within the, within the fellowship or society as it stands. And this means that day to day we carry on in this one day outlook and perception that life is one day long. We live in the present moment where if there is any conscious contact with a higher power it can be accessed realistically and with a sober head. Now it all sounds very simple when I say it like that to me but it took me a while to actually understand what it meant maybe for other people and the only way I found out how it could mean something to me was to listen to the very many voices in recovery. It doesn't mean we're going to agree with everything we're here. Indeed it would be completely, I suppose it would be impossible to agree with the outlook of everyone around what God may be, what recovery is. Recovery is what it is to you in this current moment of now. So if sober is your preference and however you do that, work it, it is working for you, carry on. But if you're having difficulty, as I often do, with coping with reality, then I go to a meeting of fellowship and listen to the many people and not just my own inner voice which can say you're a piece of whatever you don't deserve this or why is it always happening to me why can't I get that job why can't I be that person why is it that I have to experience this hardship why is it that I experience this joy but it can't be sustained all those questions can be answered in the company of others so whether it's AA or something else it matters not. It's whatever floats your sobriety out of the ocean of alcohol and into a good life. It won't be easy, that's for sure. Life is difficult. Anyway, that's enough of me for today. Um, the serenity prayer, which is broken down into accepting what I cannot do. Rather, yes. It's accepting what I can do. Courage. I, you know, this is it. Sometimes everything escapes me. I'll just say it and then I'll explain it. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God, grant me the courage, the serenity to accept the things I cannot do. Accept the things I cannot do, which is to manipulate, control people, places, and things. In fact, it would go against everything I believe in now. Courage to change the things I can, which is me, my attitudes, behaviour, and understanding, getting a bit more truth on a daily basis. And the wisdom to know the difference. I can get confused any time of day about what I can and cannot do. Because maybe I want it my way or the highway. But, you know, with prayer meditation and other stuff, and going to meetings, I keep on track, which is, I'm not God. I'm not here to control anything. I'm here to make choices based on real life as it is today. Make cho best choice of what can be done. Does not mean it's going all my way. That the promise of a sober day is far more possible with the help of, with the help of other people. So finally, that serenity prayer as it is. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is for me just for today.